Welcome to our tutorial about importing video into Cubase. In this tutorial, we'll learn about the types of video files that Cubase supports, how to import them into Cubase, and how to extract the audio from a video file if that's all you need. With the widespread use of digital video cameras, more and more people are using computers to edit movies, of course. And Cubase allows you to take your video files, add sound to them to create new voiceovers, original soundtracks, and more. You can use your computer monitor to display the video within Cubase itself, or you can connect an external monitor. The second option frees up your computer's resources, giving you a better quality and bigger image while you work on the sound, but you'll need a special video card for this. In this lesson, we'll learn how to view our video inside Cubase. Let's go to Devices, Device Setup. The Device Setup window opens. Let's go to the Video Player branch of the Devices tree. And let's take a look at the Video Player section. The PC version of Cubase supports Microsoft Direct Show and DirectX, Apple's QuickTime, and Video for Windows. The playback method, formerly called the playback engine, is what lets you view the video. The Macintosh version of Cubase supports the QuickTime playback method, and you can also view AVI files within QuickTime, as well as MPEGs and DV formats. Plus, you can even use a FireWire device to display the video, so that's an additional convenience. What all this means is that Cubase supports the principal movie file types that are generated by your video cameras, whether QuickTime movies, Windows Media videos, MPEGs, and AVI files. Now let's talk about how to set up for the import of video files in Cubase. The first thing we need to do is choose the playback method from this drop-down menu. I'm going to leave my setting at Direct Show Video. Next, under Video Properties, we choose Big Size, Small Size, or Tiny Size. The larger the video window, the more processing power your computer will have to put out. Also, it's hard to work with Big Size when you're using only one monitor. I'm going to use the Small Size for the video display within Cubase. And now we're ready to click Apply and OK. And let's go to the File menu or Cubase on your Mac and scroll down to Preferences. Select Video from the Event Display branch. Check Show Video Thumbnails to see a thumbnail preview of the video on the video track right inside the project window. Underneath this option, we've got Video Cache Size. This represents the cache memory reserved to display those thumbnails. If you're using a long video file or want to stretch the track to see bigger frames, you need to increase the cache size. Otherwise, just leave this setting at its default value. How you adjust this value depends on how much of your computer's resources you can spare for this, so if it's not essential, leave the RAM value here low. Let's click Apply and OK. Now we're ready to import a video. Go to the File or Cubase menu, select Import, and then Video File. Now we're prompted to browse to the location of our video file. Let's select it. Check here if you want the audio to be extracted to its own track. This is how you replace a video's audio. And check here to generate the thumbnail cache that we spoke about a moment ago. Here we see some detailed info about the video file. The file type is AVI, frames per second 10, with a total of 1,448 frames. Video size 900 by 700 pixels. Total duration is 2 minutes, 24 seconds. File size, 25.8 megabytes. Let's click Open. Cubase imports the audio, gives us a status. Cubase generates the thumbnail cache, and a moment longer to generate the audio event image for the extracted audio track. So on top here is our video track displaying the thumbnails. Down below is the extracted audio track for that video. Let's adjust our zoom position, zoom to full. Now double-click on the video track to launch the video player. 
This display window is the small size that I'd selected in the Video Preferences dialog window. The keyboard shortcut to show and hide the video player is F8, and this will toggle the video display on and off. Let's see how big the Big Display option is. Let's go back to Devices, Device Setup, Big, Apply and OK. Now F8 to launch the video player. The player launches at its full size, 900 by 700 pixels. Let's close this display. Let's test the tiny display. Go to Devices, Device Setup, Tiny, Apply and OK. F8 to launch the video player again. And the player launches in a large thumbnail size. And this display resolution uses the least amount of resources, so if your computer is struggling, keep your display at tiny. Let's restore to small, it's just a little bit easier for me to see. Apply and OK. Double click the video track to launch the player. And let's return our cursor to zero and play. Welcome to our tutorial about importing audio files. In addition to recording your new and stuff, press stop when you're done. You Let me close the player to free up some screen resources here. And let's return to zero. Now let's expand the size of our video and audio track. And as you can see, the thumbnail doesn't regenerate here. That means I don't have enough RAM dedicated to this process. Let's increase the amount of RAM that we have dedicated to creating the thumbnail cache. Let's say to 20 megabytes. Apply and OK. Cubase needs a minute to process this, and the thumbnail display regenerates. Return to zero. Now if you only want the audio track of a video and not the video itself, you can use the Import Audio from Video File option. Audio from Video File. This creates a separate audio file from your video and puts it in your project, but doesn't import the video itself. First, let's create an audio track. OK. Let's give our track a descriptive name, VoiceOver. And let's position the cursor where we want to insert the audio file. However, you can insert right on an existing track. Just position the cursor wherever you'd like Cubase to drop the file. Let's select our new track, VoiceOver, and return to zero. Now go to File or Cubase, Import, Audio from Video File. The Import Audio Tracks from Video dialog window opens. Let's navigate to our video and select it. Now click Open. A status box displays Cubase's progress, and the extracted audio is dropped onto the track that we'd selected at the cursor position that we'd specified. Notice the name of the audio file. It's the same as the name of the original video. Let's open up the pool. Now open the audio folder. As you can see, the new audio file is stored in the audio folder of our current project directory. The original video file is not used. Let's expand the video folder. And as you can see, the video for 01 intro is not here. Let's close the pool window. We'll be learning more about using the pool later on in this course. And this concludes our lesson on importing video into Cubase.